Our goal at Circuit Board Medics is to simplify the process of component removal and reinstallation for our customers. Therefore, we are creating a video to show the removal of a fuel injection control module from a 6.0 liter power stroke. We are going to begin with a few essential tools. You will need a small socket wrench, an 8 mm socket, and a 10 mm socket. You will also need a pair of pliers. If you are planning to test the voltage output from the FICM, you will need a voltmeter and a T20 Torx bit or socket. Please ensure that the engine is cool before attempting to remove the FICM. There are serious burn hazards from the engine and coolant if the engine is not completely cooled. We will begin by repositioning the coolant reservoir. There is no need to drain any of the coolant as long as you follow the instruction of this video. The tank is held in place by two bolts at the top. We will remove these two bolts with our 8mm socket. Once the bolts are removed, reposition the tank by sliding it towards the front of the vehicle. We are going to move it towards the driver's side fender, so we need to disconnect the small hose on the passenger side of the tank. You will need to ensure that you keep the tank tilted so that the coolant does not escape when the hose is removed. Use your pliers to remove the hose clamp at the reservoir. There will likely be some pressure in the system, so remove this hose slowly. Once it is removed, we will move the tank over to the driver's side of the engine compartment to provide access to the FICM. It is important to place the loose end of the hose in a container because coolant will spew from it when the vehicle is cranked during our test procedure. If you do not plan on testing the voltage output, ensure that the loose end of the hose is either placed in a container or kept higher than the tank to prevent coolant from leaking from it. Now you can see the FICM and have access to testing it. You will need to remove the window covering the test terminals. Do this by using your T20 Torx bit to remove the two screws securing it. It will likely be stuck to the housing due to years of high heat in the engine compartment, so pry it up gently using a small flathead screwdriver. Be careful not to damage the rubber seal under the window when removing it. The vehicle in this video is a 2007 model. It has four terminals on the FICM. Some of the earlier FICMs have seven test terminals, but I'll show you how to test both in this video. You will need a voltmeter capable of testing DC volts to test the output strength of the module. Set your voltmeter to DC volts and use your positive lead to test the terminal on the FICM and the negative lead to ground to the negative terminal on your battery. It is very, very important not to allow your positive test lead to touch the housing of the FICM while you are touching the terminal. Do not let it lean over and touch anything other than the terminal or you will fry your module. If you have a 4-pin FICM as pictured here, you will use your positive lead to test the terminal closest to the driver's side. If you have a 7-pin module, as pictured here, you will test the terminal closest to the passenger side in the row of 4. With the key turned to the on position, not cranking, just in the on position, you should read 48 volts. We are testing a good unit in this video, but even most failed units will still read 48 volts with the key on and the engine not running. Next, have a helper crank the vehicle while continuing to measure the voltage. Remember not to allow the test lead from your meter to touch the housing of the FICM. If your vehicle is suffering from a rough running or hard starting condition, crank your engine and check the voltage output while it is running. You should receive a minimum of 45 volts. If your vehicle is suffering from a no start condition, you can still get a voltage reading from a few seconds of the engine cranking, but don't allow more than a few seconds of cranking at a time to prevent your starter from burning out. Next, we will remove the fuel injection control module. On this 2007 model, there are two 10 mm bolts in the front and two in the back. On some of the earlier models, the bolts in the rear are 8 mm. The nuts that secure the FICM may look different on your vehicle than what are being removed in this video as well. 
Once the bolts or nuts securing the module have been removed, you can lift up on it to gain access to the wiring harness connections. In my opinion, this is the hardest part of the whole removal process. I'm going to take a few moments here to give you a better perspective of how these connect in hopes of making removal easier for you. I have an extra core along with an extra connector that I'm going to use to demonstrate how the three connections attach to the module. There are two tabs opposite of each other on the longer sides of each connector. You will need to squeeze these tabs and pull the connector out. Each one is firmly attached, so you might find it difficult to remove. When reinstalling the connectors, insert it firmly until you hear each one snap into place. Once again, just squeeze the tabs and pull the connector to remove, and when installing the rebuilt module, just press it firmly into place until it snaps. Once the three connectors have been disconnected, just pull the FICM out of the engine compartment. It is now ready to be packaged and shipped to us for refurbishment. Please ensure that you protect it when packaging with bubble wrap or other means of protective packaging material. Please visit our website at www.circuitboardmedics.com to contact us if you have any other questions or comments regarding the services we offer. We hope this video has helped. Thanks for watching.